because if you look close right behind me i've got a robot mower if you're anything like me you have probably been curious how these things work if they are worth buying because they are pretty expensive and you're probably curious how they don't get lost how they know where they are on the lawn now there's a bunch of different ways that these robot lawn mowers can map out your lawn uh, and not get lost. Some of the earliest versions of these things use boundary wires, and you can still buy those kinds of mowers today. However, the most common, at least during the year 2025, most common way that these lawn mowers work is using something called RTK. RTK stands for real-time kinematic. Kinematics is kind of this subset of like physics and math uh, that's all about positioning. Kinematics tracks how things move in relation to other things, not taking the cause of movement into consideration. That's random information. That's just good to know. Doesn't really matter uh, what kinematics are. RTK is, the, uh, is what these robot mowers use, most of them. But what is it uh, like in your lawn? Like, what does that mean? Essentially, RTK technology uses all of the satellites in the sky, not just like GPS satellites, like all of them. It's like a generic term for all of the satellites. And all of these satellites are saying, you know, they're circling the earth and the earth is spinning and all of that sort of business. It, all of those satellites are sending signals down. And if you have a receiver on the ground, then that receiver can understand where exactly it is in the world based on all of the satellites sending it information. So the receiver and the satellites are sending information back and forth. The problem with this, though, is that it's not very accurate. Like, it's pretty accurate. Like, if you want to know if you're in Houston or in Seattle, it'll tell you very accurately. But if you want to know if the lawnmower is under this bush or this bush, then it's not accurate enough. And that's because of distortions in various parts of the atmosphere, uh, clock timing issues, a whole bunch of other random weird stuff that is above my pay grade. So the way that RTK technology improves the accuracy of positioning is to use a fixed base. It's essentially a solid point on the ground that can correct for all of the distortions uh, of the signal as it receives because it also sends back and forth um, information from the base station to the satellites and to the rover. So the rover is for a robot lawnmower, that's the actual lawnmower. The mower moves around the property and it's constantly sending the signal back to its fixed base station, which you set up in your, in your yard. Um, on I have it set up on my fence. You can uh, set this thing up on your roof. No matter where you set it up, the mower is the rover and it's sending information back to the base and to the satellites. The satellites are sending it. It's like this triangulation and it can improve the accuracy, the location accuracy of the rover to, uh, to like the centimeter level as opposed to like five to 10 feet. Now I've been using this, uh, this robot mower, uh, for about three weeks or so now. I've just made the jump into it. I'm not going to say that this is the best uh, lawnmower out there, but it's going to be the best for many of you guys. There are lots of RTK-based um, robot lawnmowers. This one is pretty small. You can get these things very big. Echo, for instance, has robot mowers that have a 40-inch deck. So if you've got like a gigantic property uh, that's relatively flat, you wouldn't use this. It's nowhere near big enough, but they all run on the same technology. This is what we call an RTK rover. In surveying, it's those sticks that people just stick around, they're walking around and they're taking positioning data. But for lawnmowers, the actual mower is the rover and its base station is an RTK receiver. Now, you could just like mount it into the ground or up onto the roof. I decided to mount mine right on the inside of my fence. In fact, I'm not even using the, the bottom of it. I just like drilled it into the fence so this thing is stable. It does not move. So long as I'm getting a good signal on this, which I can see from the front. With my lights right there, everything is green. I got perfect signaling. Then I know that this thing is constantly sending information up to the satellites and down to my rover or the lawnmower itself. Now, RTK mowers 
are going to be very accurate. However, they are going to have some limitations. And usually it has to do with the wheels or how it navigates. It might know exactly where it is, but if it can't physically go here or there, then it doesn't matter if it knows where it is because it can't do it. Some of these mowers are capable of going up steeper slopes. Some of these mowers have a wider base. They're heavier, which means that if you don't have a dense lawn, that they're going to start getting stuck. Some of these mowers are on wheels, some are on tracks, some are two-wheel drive, some are all-wheel drive. Depending on what kind of lawn you have is going to majorly dictate which lawnmower, which option in the robotic lawnmower category is going to be best for you. Here, you see on my main front lawn, this is a very well-defined space. There's no curb edging, you know, like the road where we could just fall off. I have a barrier between my landscape bed and the lawn itself. There are some lawnmowers where you don't really even need RTK technology. A lawn like this specifically would do just fine with visual mapping. So if you don't want to pay the extra money for RTK and you've got a lawn like this, then it's unnecessary. Now, not just visual mapping, but there's also uh, v slam. So slam would be simultaneous location and mapping. So that's basically a more uh, impressive version of uh, visual recognition. So some mowers basically just recognize that they're on grass and then they stop when they get to something that's not grass. V slam or visual mapping has to do with looking out using a, uh, using a visual sensor on the machine to map out the property or to recognize things that might be in the property. My mower over there combines RTK and V slam so that it always knows where it is in terms of its position, but it is also learning by looking around the property. So for instance, if I had something, uh, let's call this yellow spot right here. Um, if I had like a bird bath right there, um, it would recognize that the bird bath is there because of the V slam and the RTK would give its position and it would learn to go around it. Now V slam is similar or I don't know, it's not exactly similar. It's I don't know, related, I guess, to uh, LIDAR, which is more of a light sensor scanning. So a uh, visual scan, a, vis a visual slam versus a uh, laser slam. So the laser is going out of the mower in the terms of uh, LIDAR and it's hitting the bush and it's coming back and it's tracking how much time it took that laser to reflect back and forth so that it knows where it goes. And then it starts mapping out all of these points all over the place. So inside the, uh, the machine, it essentially has a scatter map, a plot graph. I don't know what you would call it. Just a, a whole like bajillion points in place that it sees things. So it knows where it is within that, uh, within that map that it generates with the laser reflection. LIDAR tends to be more expensive and it also tends to be better for places that are, that have lots and lots of obstructions. So with RTK, the more obstructions you have, uh, be it be houses or cars or trees or lots of overhead, uh, cover, LIDAR ends up being a little bit better. Also, if you have like mounds or hills where there's more vertical movement, then LIDAR becomes more and more important. But the typical lawn tends to look like this, which is why the vast majority of RTK machines will work just fine so long as they're set up well. Now with my unit over there, I'm actually, I, I have, I walked it around manually by myself and I have mapped around the edges of uh, the mowing zones that I want. And I, I track or I uh, program it to mow uh, whenever I want, basically daily. But as it goes, it's constantly scanning through its VSLAM uh, and learning, um, learning how my, uh, my mowing zones uh, work in relation to the positioning that it's getting from satellite technology. As it goes, it just works better. If there was a mower, and I don't know of one right off the top of my head, but you could use RTK and LiDAR for an improved experience. And most likely at some point in the future, some robot lawnmower is gonna start combining those technologies. It'll probably be pricey and it will probably be quite an upgrade. 
But for the time being, the vast majority of these mowers all use the RTK concept. And then they add in extra features uh, in terms of their visual ability to look out, scan around them, and understand the environment around them. You know, like if there's a toy in the middle of the yard, they're not going to try to run it over. I got a blog post linked down in the description below where I discuss the various kinds and the various brands of robot lawnmowers because I can't just say this is the best mower and I'm not going to do that. There are many different yards where one mower makes all the sense in the world, but it doesn't make it all any sense at all for someone else. So if you are going down this journey, looking to drop, you know, anywhere between like $800 and $5,000 on a robot lawnmower, definitely do your research. Hopefully this blog post will help. And in the near future, I will have more videos about, I don't know, educating about the concept of uh, these robot lawnmowers. Make sure to take a look at this video right up here for more on that topic.